Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So I am back today to do a thrift flip for you guys and I'm really excited about this one. Um, my mom recently gave me this skirt that she had thrifted because the fabric was so nice. It's a really beautiful silk fabric and the lining is silk as well. So there's a lot of fabric in this piece. It's kind of this ombre type of effect and I think I'm going to um, use just the darker portion of it today for this video, but I think I'll actually be able to get a couple of different pieces out of the skirt, which I'm excited about. So let me tell you what I am going to do with this today though. I saw this really cute top on Yes Style and I thought I would try to recreate that today. It is a button front top with kind of puffy sleeves and this cute scalloped detail at the neckline that I thought was so cute and just very summer appropriate. So I have this pattern that I'm going to be working with today. This is the Violet Blouse from Colette Patterns and I will link to this down below in case any of you guys wanna do the same thing. So the only thing I'm going to do to alter it, I'm gonna use version two and I'm just going it to make this neckline into a V neckline with a scalloped detail so I'll show you guys how I draw that onto my pattern here in just a second but I think it's gonna be really cute I'm also going to put covered buttons down the front so I'm excited to see how it turns out and I'm gonna go ahead and get started all right, so to make this top, the first thing I did was to take my seam ripper and rip apart the skirt with my seam ripper. Um, I took out some of the side seams, but I mainly wanted to detach the lining from the skirt. I thought I might turn the lining into a skirt on its own, and that is what I ended up doing with it. So I took that out and then just had the outer fabric to work with for my top. So once I had done that, I could go ahead and cut out my pattern pieces. So I am cutting out the pieces just as they are, and then I will go in and alter the neckline here in just a minute. So this is the front piece here. It's just a simple um, blouse front piece with darts. And then I am also cutting out the back pieces. Now for this pattern, there is a lower and upper back piece because it has a yoke. And you'll see that I'm focusing on using the lower bit of the fabric because I want to mainly use the darker portion. And I thought this would make it look a little bit more even since the fabric is ombre. And then I also cut out the sleeve. Mine is a little bit shorter than the pattern piece because I didn't have quite enough fabric of the part I wanted to use, but that was fine. So now I'm going to make a little scalloped template. And to do this, I'm just using a spool of thread to mark off a half circle shape. Shape. You could use whatever you have on hand that's a half circle shape. And then I am just drawing that out. I drew two of these and then cut them apart and then used this to repeat my pattern. This kept everything really even so that I could have a piece that went over the length of the entire neckline. Then I just cut my template apart so that I could use it to trace onto my fabric. So now I'm going to use this template as a stencil to get the scalloped detail on my neckline. So I am just placing this across the neckline to create this V type of style. And then I'm just going to mark that on my fabric. I'm using a pen here. You might want to use something a little more removable, but I knew I would be cutting the edge off. And then I'm just using some small sharp scissors to cut around the scalloped detail. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the back piece. And since my template is paper, I can kind of pivot it as I go around and trace. This keeps everything really even, but also allows me to match it to that neckline. And then I'm just doing the same thing, trimming off the excess fabric around the scallops. So here is what the front looks like after the scallops are added. You can see that it'll have a little overlap in the front since it is a button front design, but I don't want these to be a raw edge. So I'm going to make something called a facing and a facing is a piece of fabric that matches to the neckline, but has a little bit more width so that you can sew it on and then turn it to the inside, finishing off that edge. So I've just traced the front of my bodice on to a separate piece of fabric. And then I'm going to cut around this to make it about two inches wide all the way around. So it just goes on the interior of the fabric facing it. So I've made one of these for each of the front pieces and I'm also going to make one for the back piece as well. Again, just tracing it and then adding a little bit of width so that it has some substance to it. And then I'll just cut that out as well. So now I can get started with sewing this shirt and the first step is to sew the shoulder seam. So you'll see here I have the front pieces as well as that top back piece. I've pinned them together at the shoulders and then I will stitch those down with a straight stitch. I am using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance because that's what my pattern calls for and I will also finish these edges off with my serger. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing with my facing, pinning the top shoulder areas together and then sewing that down. I won't serge this since it won't show, but I am going to serge all the way around the outer edge just to keep it from fraying on the inside of my shirt. One little note about the facing, ideally I would have used a fusible interfacing on this, which is like a uh, piece of material you can iron onto the fabric to make it a little stiffer and more sturdy, but I didn't have any on hand, so I just decided to skip it today, but you might find better results with that. So now I'm going to add the facing to the neckline, and this part will require a little bit of patience with these scallops, but I promise the end result is really cute and definitely worth the time. So I am just pinning this to the neckline, matching up all of the scallops, and then pinning all the way down down the front. Then I'm going to stitch this whole thing down with a straight stitch. I am going to use a little bit of a smaller seam allowance for the neckline, the scalloped part of the neckline. I'll use about a quarter of an inch seam allowance there just to reduce the bulk and then my regular 5 8 across the front. Now you will be following the edge, so just lining up the presser foot edge to each edge of the scallop and then stitching really slowly and carefully all the way around and I would just pivot my needle as I need to as I go around those corners. So here you can see me sewing this and I like to go really slowly and then kind of stop at the end of each scallop just to turn my presser foot so that everything stays really precise. But I definitely recommend taking your time on this type of detail. So here's what the shirt looks like now that the facing has been attached and I'm just going to trim off the excess fabric on the front that's going to keep it from being super bulky when we turn it towards the inside. And then going around the scallops, I am just clipping to the seam. So I'm not cutting into the stitching, but putting these little notches in is going to make the fabric turn to the inside so much better. So now I'm going to turn my facing towards the inside and I'm using a knitting needle here just to help me push those little scallops out and then using my iron each time I do, just so that I get the most clean and precise shape possible. So with my neckline done, now I can move on to just following the pattern instructions pretty much. So I am going to pin and sew the darts to start. Darts give a lot of shape to garments, so they're a really nice detail. And I am pinning these down, just transferring the markings from the pattern. And then I'll sew from the wide end towards the center and just stitch straight off and not off the end. This will keep it from puckering. Now I'm adding gathering stitches to the top of the lower back piece, and I'm gathering that towards the middle of the garment and then I will pin this with the right sides together and stitch it down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm also going to serge off this edge just to prevent it from unraveling. And then one final detail that I'm adding to this that is totally optional is just to top stitch across that. Top stitching is just kind of like detailed stitching. You might notice it on jeans or different garments like that. And I think it can really help with silk to make it look a little bit more polished, but it just depends on the specific thing I'm making. So now I'm going to sew the side seams. So putting the right sides of the garment together and then stitching each side seam down. I'm also going to serge these as well. So next I have pressed my sleeve pieces and I'm going to sew the side seams. Now don't worry, my fabric is not stained, that's just from the steam from my iron. So I'm just stitching down the side seams and then serging them as well. And then once again, I'm going to serge the bottom of the sleeves. Next, I'm going to turn this up for an elastic casing. So I'm turning it up one half an inch. I'm using about a half an inch elastic. And then I will stitch across this like for a hem, but leave a little gap to insert the elastic. You just wanna make sure that the opening is big enough for the elastic that you've chosen. And then I'm going to thread elastic through. I've just measured this elastic on my arm to make sure it'll be a comfortable fit. Then once it's threaded through, I like to use a safety pin for this, you can just overlap the pieces of elastic, making sure it's not twisted, and then stitch it down with a zigzag stitch. I like to go back and forth with a zigzag stitch because I feel like it keeps it really secure and I don't have to worry about it coming apart. So the sleeves are now done and I can go ahead and sew them into the shirt. So I'm just pinning this into the armhole with the right sides together and then I will stitch it down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then serge off the edge. If you are noticing a pattern here, a lot of 5 eighths of an inch seam allowances and serging off the edge. Next 
Next I'm going to make some covered buttons and you can find kits to do this at a lot of different stores and also on Amazon. It's really simple. You just follow the instructions on the package. So I made five of these. Then I'm going to shorten my shirt just a little bit. I decided I wanted it to be about three inches shorter after trying it on. So I'm just using my serger to trim off some fabric here that I've marked. Then I'm just going to turn up that edge about a half an inch for the hem and stitch it down with a straight stitch. All that's left to do is add the buttons and buttonholes. So I am just marking where I want my buttonholes to be. There is a uh, place on the pattern to indicate this, so you can just transfer those markings. And then I am sewing my buttonholes. I am adding a little bit of stabilizer to the back of my buttonholes since I didn't have any interfacing. This just makes it a little bit easier to sew on this delicate fabric. And then I'm just trimming away any excess so that it's not in the way and doesn't look bulky. Then I will just mark where my buttons need to go using the buttonholes and sew on all the buttons. And with that, this shirt was done. I was so happy with how this project turned out. I think it turned out really similar to the original one from YesStyle that inspired this project. And it was so fun to see a thrifted skirt transform into something totally different. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it as well. I love how the details like the scalloped edge and the covered buttons came together on this. I think they're so pretty. And I love how this blue color pairs with white. So I'm wearing it with some of my favorite white pants here. And I really like that. I wanted to show you guys as well how it looks untucked. So here's the length. It's a little bit shorter than the original pattern. And I even had enough fabric to make myself some silk scrunchies so I did that with a little bit of the scraps. Alright guys that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed seeing how I put this shirt together. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I've only had it for a couple of days but I've already really been enjoying styling it and wearing it. I think it's a really fun style and I love that scalloped detail on the neckline. It's always so much fun to me to see how a piece of clothing can totally transform because it is just fabric. So it's really fun to me to do these thrift flips and I'm really excited to be able to go back to the thrift stores soon. I haven't been thrifting since March, I think. And I used to go like twice a week on my way home from work. So I'm definitely looking forward to being able to get back into that routine here in hopefully the not too distant future. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, you can go ahead and do that now by clicking the red button down below to stay tuned for future videos like this. I have a lot of new content coming up and this week I'm actually posting three videos. So if you follow me, you know I usually just do one video a week, but I'm gonna try and do a few more over the next few weeks. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the content. I'm really excited about a lot of the projects I have to share. So I hope you will enjoy seeing them as well. But yeah, I think with that, I'm going to leave it here for today. If you do want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on Instagram for like behind the scenes of what I'm working on. Um, I share that on my Instagram stories a lot and you can find me over at just Lauren Johnson on Instagram and I would love to see you over there. But I think that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.